Hello YouTube, this is Tutoring Potential and today we will be looking at SAT practice uh, math for the SAT college admissions exam. Uh, we're going to look at math practice. This is section 2 from College Board's uh, free test available from their website, collegeboardibelieve.com uh, and they may ask for an email, they may not uh, and then you go ahead and download the test, print it out uh, and then we can go over it it also gives you the option to take it online. You're welcome to do that, uh, please, by all means. Let's go ahead and start. Okay. Okay. So number one says if 10 plus x is equals 5 more than 10, that's 10 plus 5, what is 2x? Ten plus x equals fifteen. X equals fifteen minus ten or five. So two times x is two times five or ten. Uh, I'll try and write bigger for you. That is choice C. Number two says the result when a number, let's call it n, is divided by two is equal to when the result when the same number is divided by four what is that number well there's only one number that I can divide by two different integers or any rational number and get the same result that number is zero which is choice C if I go ahead and cross multiply I'll get something like 2n equals 4n and I'll divide by well if I divide by n I'll get 2 equals 4 and it doesn't help me if I subtract 2 I'll get 4n equals 0. Now I'll divide by 4 and I'll get 0 equals, I'm sorry, I'll get n equals 0, which is what I want. Uh, so, But 0 is the only number that has that property. Go ahead and ditch that. Three says, if this page was folded, probably were folded, along the dotted line in the figure above, the left half of the letter W would exactly coincide with the right half. Which of the following letters, as shown, cannot be folded along a vertical line so that its left half would coincide with its right half? Well, I'm not sure that they did us any favors by not giving us the term. In this case, the term is vertical symmetry. And they've taken capital vowels, A, I, O, U, and E. The odd one out is E. E does not have a vertical symmetry. Uh, U does, O does, I does right down the middle. All right, but E doesn't. He's our answer. That's number three, which is uh, E. Choice E as well. All right, now this figure is going to be a little tough to see, so I'm going to try and draw it a little better. Looks like kind of an X. A line coming out of it. Our lines are L and K. Now these are degrees. It's point Q, P degrees, X degrees. So we can't say Q is a number and we can't say R is a number. So let's say uh, L and K intersect at point Q. If M equals 40, if this is 40, and P is 25, that's hard to see, that's 25, what is X here? Well, this is 40, then what, what looks like Q here must be 140. And so basically this this plus this plus this equals 180 because that's a straight line K. So I have 140 plus 25 plus X equals 180. Am I still on the page? Kind of. 165 plus X equals 180. X equals 15 degrees. Choice A. Alright, this one's a little written on. Sorry about that. You need the table though, don't you? Which of the following equations is satisfied by the five pairs of numbers listed on the table above? Okay, and then they give us the equations. Wrote on those, sorry again. What I'm first going to do is start with zero. Because this it's a number times um, x or it's, it's x to a power. But all of those first terms will equal zero if I do that. So if, it, if, my, if my x, y is 0, 3, I need 3 on the right-hand side. That's why you've seen me eliminate choice C, D, and E. Now I'll choose 1. 
1 cubed is 1 plus 3 is 4. So if, if A were the answer, then that would be a 4. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 3 is 6. This checks out. So will the others. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15. B is the correct answer. You can, you can go ahead and, and try the rest of them, but if you find one that works, um, or you eliminate all the others that don't work, that's fine on a, on a standardized test that's timed. Uh, that may be the way to go about it. May be the way to go about it. Circle graph shows David monthly expenses. If David uh, spends five, excuse me, 450 per month for food, how much does he spend per month on his car? Well, 450. I'm going to leave off per month because everything's per month. Monthly expenses is food, which represents 25% or 0.25 of his monthly. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to divide 450 by 0.25. And I'm going to get x equals 1800. So the whole month he spends $1800. On his car, his car is 20%. I do 1800 times 0.2. And that's going to be $360, which is marked C for number 6. All right, let's see how we're doing. If n and k are positive integers and 8 to the n equals 2 to the k, what is the value of n divided by k? Well, maybe you can see I've already written this one out. Um, it has one equation with two variables, but we can still solve it. What we're going to do is we're going to take 8, we're going to write it as 2 cubed. 2 cubed to the n equals, this stays the same, 2 to the k. The power raised to power is multiplication. 2 to the 3n equals 2 to the k. Because my bases are the same, I can set my exponents equal to each other. 3n equals k. And when it wants, I'm going to rewrite that. 3n equals k. It wants n over k. Well, I'm going to divide both sides by k. 3n over k equals 1. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I get n over k is 1 third, which should be b. Let's check it out. Okay, good. Number eight. In a certain store, the regular price of a refrigerator is $600. How much is saved by buying this refrigerator at 20% off the regular price than buying it on sale at 10% off the regular price with an additional 10% off the sale price? Okay, all right. Well, um, let me go ahead and do this one, then I'll, I'll tell you um, what this one's all about. Maybe not in that order. Okay, if I, okay, this is really 600 minus 20% of 600. So, or it's 80% it's of 600, either way. Four hundred eighty, right? Four eighty. Okay. Now, if, if I take, if I do ten percent, this okay, ten percent off. That would be ninety percent of six hundred. So I do 0 0.9 times six hundred. That's five hundred and forty. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.9 again. It's four hundred eighty-six dollars. Okay, so the difference is six dollars. So what it's saying is, if I take, uh, if if something's thirty percent off, it's not the same as if something's fifteen percent off, and then I take another fifteen percent off because the second percentage is off a smaller quantity. You've already discounted once. So when you go into a store and it says fifteen percent off the store, and then you have a coupon that says take an additional ten percent you don't have uh, you know twenty five percent you have it's still good but <laughs> you can't add them together that way alright function is defined by f of x equals 3x plus 4 it wants 
2 times f of x plus 4. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 times 3x plus 4, which is 6x plus 8. I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to that. I'm going to get 6x plus 12, which looks like choice E, number 9, is choice E. What is the greatest possible area of a triangle with one side length 7 and another side length 10? Well, if I make these sides, it's 1 half base times height. And this is 1 half of 10 is 5 times 7 is 35. And for 10, that's the correct answer, 35. Well, it doesn't matter if the, if the 7 is this way and the 10 is this way, okay? These two triangles will have the same area as long as that's really 7 and that's really 10. Um, the third side, you know, is going to be less than 17 and greater than 3. Um, but in any way I draw it, I'll still have two of the sides, 7 and 10. And the area is going to be 1 half the base times the height. Um, now, of course, if they're not 90, you can have a whole lot of different configurations. Uh, but that still is the greatest area of the triangle. And we want to, whenever, whenever we see area of a triangle in this exam, we want to use one half base times height. Um, that's really what it's testing. But you may spend a couple extra seconds saying, wait, can I get higher than that? Well, the next greatest is 70. Okay, so the next greatest is 7 times 10, which would be this way. So there's no way I can draw a triangle with 7 and 10 that has an area close to, to 70. So uh, if, if, you're, you know, if you're thinking about some problem, oh, you know, is there some other formula, you know, try sketching something out. Basically, look at the next biggest answer. If I can get something close to that, you know, then it's still within the realm of maybe it's right. But if I can't, then just go ahead and go with your instinct, which is 1 half base times height, 35. And I'm going to do part 2 in video 2. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.